Hi, welcome back to Select Obsession and thanks for watching. We're continuing with the build series on how to convert your old Honda into an electric hub drive Honda. Now remember to subscribe below to keep these videos coming. You know, I've had a little delay from my last video to this video and that's because I had hoped to have some new batteries to discuss. I ordered batteries over two months ago, but the Chinese New Year and the COVID backing up all the shipping, these batteries still aren't here. I pulled this battery out of my CT90. I'm gonna be rewiring that bike. So I figured we can use this for the discussion of batteries and keep this video series rolling forward. As mentioned before, batteries can be one of the most confusing and difficult parts of the whole build. Where do you get your batteries? What's the capacity of your batteries? What cells do you use? There's so many details to it. Well, we're gonna cover some of the basics. I don't call myself a battery expert, but I can definitely reference what's worked for me in the past and what I've had decent luck with. So a few main considerations about batteries. You know, where are you gonna get it? What's the capacity you need? What's the BMS you're gonna use? And what cells are you gonna use? So let's talk a little bit about where you're gonna get your battery. I order my batteries off of Alibaba. As mentioned before, I've researched my vendor and they've worked good. I have that on my website. I'm not getting any kickbacks or anything. These guys are just work good for me. You can buy it off of eBay, Amazon, and a whole bunch of other places. Who knows if those are good batteries. Typically, if you use the better cells, like the Samsung cells, you're gonna have a better quality battery, but you're also gonna pay a lot more for it. I pay anywhere from six to 800 bucks for my batteries. You can pay north of 11 to 1500 bucks if you buy some of those higher quality cells. There's two main cells that are used in these batteries, the 18650 cells, which are more popular and been around for longer. They're the smaller cells. I use those in the CT90 battery, this battery here. Now, there's the larger cells, the 26650 cell. Those are a bit of a newer cell, and I'm buying those batteries now. Capacity, you can do everything from like a 20 amp hour battery that you're finding in a lot of those real popular scooter style bikes with the pedals on them, or you can go up to like an 80 amp hour battery that you're gonna find in like an Alta, you know, really fast high performance bike. Some bikes are even bigger than that. But, you know, your capacity is directly reflective of the size of your battery and the weight of your battery. So the less capacity, the less weight, and the less size. So you have to find a happy medium. You know, you don't want an 80 amp hour battery that's this huge 100 pound mass on these little 200 pound bikes. So I feel like the 30 amp hour or this, the 35 amp hour works real well. If you're buying a battery off of Alibaba from a manufacturer, you can really spec what that is. So I did spec this battery and I do spec all of my batteries. So they're about, uh, this one's slightly less than eight inches wide. They're about 12 inches long and about five inches deep. Of course, the smaller one on my C200 is a little bit smaller than that, but that's basically the average size. That fits in the space that we have real well. So the BMS. The BMS is basically a computer that's in your battery, right? So it manages the charge rate, the discharge rate, making sure that all of your cells get charged equally, make sure that it doesn't just charge too fast, or you don't charge it too fast. So basically controls every aspect of your battery. Now you really need to match your BMS with your cells and your BMS with your motor. If you have a motor that has too much of a draw and the BMS can't handle it, you're not gonna get the maximum performance out of it, or potentially it could cause issues with your battery. So this battery is a 50 amp hour discharge rate, so that's an average discharge rate, and a peak of 120. I'm specking all of my bikes with that. That matches the hub motor I'm using really well. I've talked to the manufacturer of the battery and the manufacturer of the motor, gotten the specs and really matched those up. Aside from that, just use some street smarts. I've had a few people email me, and they send me links to these batteries and they go, wow, look at this battery, it's really small and it's a 50 amp hour battery. <laughs> right there, it's like a red flag, you know, what's up with that, something's wrong. So if it seems, you know, really cheap or you're getting a lot for your money, it's probably BS. So as I've mentioned, go on my website. I've got some links to the people that I've used, the manufacturers I've used, and some technical data about the cells that I've used. So good luck on your battery adventure. It's a little scary and a little bit difficult because they are expensive. But once you get a good battery, you know, all the bike totally comes together.